uh, not talk too quickly. You really have to pace what you're saying. Yeah? Uh, the pitch is how low or high our voice goes. Yes. Uh, this has a lot to do with uh, having uh, control of your voice because that, a lot of uh, um, throat restriction can get involved there. And uh, people that have the habit of talking always on a, high, a note that's too high for them or always on a note that's too low for them. And the goal is variety, yeah. changing it up. And the tone is how we adjust um, the tone of our voice to create a mood, yes? So we're going to look into all these things. It's like when you talk to fourth grader, you're going to go, okay, and then sixth grader, you go, okay, now we're going to <laughs> yeah, yeah. something like this. Yeah, exactly, it changes, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and when people yeah. talk to babies, you know, mm -hmm. oh, oh. it's really different. <laughs> yeah. also, if we're in a very formal situation, it's going to be very different. You know, the way you address the person. Okay, that's a comic strip that I thought was very applicable to the situation. Uh, because they don't understand what the teacher said. Well, they heard it. <laughs> You've heard that voice in the Peanuts cartoon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, those of us who are old enough to so hear Yeah, those who are old enough. <laughs> in our generation. Um, yeah, and they still don't understand anything and they don't care. And um, I thought this is a personal uh, experience I had with this when I was uh, getting my teaching degree. I had one, the teacher of uh, psychology, which is a fascinating subject, and I think the material is just very interesting, and I, and I love it, but the way that the teacher talked, and then on top of it, it was in Catalan, which is, as it's not my first language, it's very easy to tune out. It was so boring, you just couldn't understand anything she was saying. She would stand up in front of the class and say, okay, and then we have to take the planning process, and we change it over to this other thing, and then we go like this a lot, just useless, just a waste of time. And it was a fascinating subject. And on the same note, I had a teacher for investigation of educational, I don't know what, and um, <laughs> the subject was pretty boring, I found, but she was so enthusiastic how she would talk. She was, her voice was going up sometimes and then down sometimes, and she was getting eye contact and looking. And you've never seen someone so enthusiastic about talking about something so boring. <laughs> so it's very important, yeah, the delivery. Okay, uh, so body language, As um, we're going to go back to all the, the vocal part and, and do a few little exercises with the different aspects, yeah, the four aspects. But body language is mannerisms, um, um, we're just going to talk about it for a sec. Um, mannerisms and habits we don't realize we have uh, affect our communication, yes, uh, on a lot of different levels. Little gestures we make, for example, uh, your posture, um, your stance, yeah. A lot of people have the habit of you know, going like this all the time. This all the time. <laughs> the people that scratch their face when they're nervous, have you ever noticed? Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> doing all this kind of stuff. All of those little things that might be uh, having a negative effect on what we want to communicate with our students. Yeah? Uh, so everybody has different habits. The idea is to try to, um, to, try to, um, uh, to gain consciousness of what we're doing and uh, avoid what is negative and uh, put emphasis on what is positive, yeah? And how do we do that? Well, we're going to just do some exercise now for that. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> okay, so first we're going to go into stance. I know that most of us give class uh, sitting down a lot of the time, but it doesn't really matter. It's the same idea, because there's a difference between sitting. Okay, first <laughs> chair. There's a difference between sitting. Or leaning over like this, kind of time, or kind of going like this, or sitting and having good posture and this and that, um, and your shoulders are in the correct position, and your head is in the correct position, and you're gesticulating in an adequate way with your arms and, and this kind of thing. Yeah. So um, we're going to do it standing up because that's the better way to do it. Uh, on the same note, I think that it's positive in the classes because you're just on screen to vary that sometimes. Yeah. Um, you can see yourself in the screen. So you can see what you're doing the whole time. And if you're for a long time in the same position, maybe you can do a few activities that make the camera go back a little farther and you stand up and you're doing activities just to vary the image that the children are seeing, yeah? As well as uh, you can play with the fact that it's a screen, you know, and disappear down below and then come up depending on songs or, or games that you're doing with the children, yeah? Okay, so everybody stand up now, please. Okay. First, you guys probably aren't 
nervous, but I am. Thank you for
Like, what do you look like? <laughs> yeah, I don't nervous people. I'm really nervous, and I and some people are, are more timid and they don't want to move around, and that's what their difficulty is. And I'm the opposite. I move around so much and so quickly that it's also very distracting. So, uh, so anyway, so in body language, basically, a person that is open, yeah, stands on both feet or sits on both buttocks, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Head held high, chest exposed, arms by your side, your shoulders, back and relaxed, and if you gesture, it's with purpose and uh, <coughs> big gestures and conscious gestures, yeah? And a closed person is someone who hangs his head, both his arms like this, he's got the shoulders going down, and they kind of don't, you know, they've got the posture going on one foot or the other, or his sitting on his chair. <laughs> Okay. Okay. Now we're going to move on to uh, the vocal aspect. Okay. The core of using your voice correctly and having control of your voice is <coughs> breathing. Yeah. Author, singers, radio announcers, anyone. Breathing is the core of proper voice speech. Yes. So we need to breathe from our diaphragms and not from our lungs. Yeah, uh, just to give you an example, um, if you speak, if, you, if, you, if you're nervous and you're holding your tension and you keep your breath only in your chest, then your voice is going to be coming out like this because you're not really supporting down in your diaphragm, so it goes up a little higher and it's like breathy and it's really annoying to listen to. And <laughs> if we're supporting from our diaphragm, we have a strong voice, it can be quiet, but the tone is, is proper because it's not a bunch of air coming out. Again, you can control the volume, you can control the pitch, and everything. The diaphragm is the place to talk from. Yeah? Okay, so let's uh, do a little experiment.